Hello, Brevard. Today we're going to be talking about network security. First off, the expectation of privacy. Here you can see the login screen of one of our computers. The highlighted section states, all information on this computer system or network resources may be intercepted, recorded, read, copied, and disclosed by authorized personnel for official purposes, including criminal investigations. You may be asking, should I connect to BPS networks on my personal devices? It's really your choice. Anytime you're on a device that is connected to the BPS network, assume that you are being monitored. BPS policy states, the wireless access user also agrees to and accepts that his or her access and or connection to the board's networks may be monitored to record dates, time, duration of access, data types, and volumes, etc. in order to identify unusual usage patterns or other suspicious activity. As with in-house computers, this is done in order to identify accounts slash computers that may have been compromised by external parties. Physical devices. Be sure to lock your computer when you're not supervising it. A simple way to lock your computer is by holding the Windows and L key at the same time. Whenever you're ready to unlock your computer, hold Control, Alt, Delete, and sign back in. Make sure you're giving proper transport and care of your computers if you do have a physical device that you're carrying from one place to the next. This might include laptops, iPads, or various tablets. If a device does malfunction, is stolen, damaged, or compromised, see your school's tech specialist. Be sure to use caution when connecting to non-BPS networks. This could be places like the library, Starbucks, McDonald's, any place that's public. Also, be careful when giving substitutes access to your technology resources. Make sure you're not allowing a coworker to use a device when you are logged in. Also, don't allow family members to access a take-home device that you're logged into. BPS policy states, staff members are reminded that personally identifiable student information is confidential and may not be disclosed without prior written parental permission. It is the responsibility of staff members to protect any district data kept on staff member equipment. This might be a PC, a laptop, portable drives, CDs, floppies, etc. Due diligence must be exercised in keeping this information secured. Protection of physical or software measures should be used when transporting any critical data from or between district sites. To log into our BPS applications, first off, we'll need our Microsoft Network AD account. So this is often going to be your last name, dot first name, .org. Then you'll simply type in your password. Here are some popular BPS applications that you may see on your desktop. AS400 is our data entry system, and Presto is where teachers go to upload student attendance daily. Password. BPS policy states staff members may only access the network by using their assigned network account. Use of another person's account, address, password is prohibited. Staff members may not allow other users to utilize their passwords. Staff members may not go beyond their authorized access. Be sure to create secure passwords and keep them secret. Here you can see an image of our Launchpad. The Launchpad holds many of the web browser apps that we utilize daily. You might find your My Information Center, a link to the Help Desk, or even to Focus here. Here you can see an image of a Focus Gradebook. So within the Focus Gradebook, we have public records, including information about students and the household they live in, and also gradebook information from our teacher's data entry. So it's very important to make sure that we always log out when we're done with this program. We wouldn't want any of this information getting out to students or parents that may be in the room. In Brevard, we have a Google Drive. Within the Google Drive, we utilize two domains. For elementary students and elementary teachers, they may use the Learn account. For elementary teachers, secondary students, and secondary teachers, they use the Share account. Your browser can hold your credentials when you log into Google, so be sure to sign out when you're done. Within Google, you can share documents with people all around the district. Also, you may want to have your sync turned on in Chrome settings so you can retrieve documents from one place to the next. Email. Proper use is intended for official district business. 
Occasional use for personal reasons is acceptable when one cannot reach people by phone. Your email usage must follow copyright law. And remember, email is public record and may be open for inspection. Attachments. Be sure not to open from unknown people or sources. When in doubt, confirm with the sender before opening any attachment. If an attachment is opened and the computer behaves strangely, report to your tech associate. Prohibited use of email includes political activity, political or religious advocacy, or activities on behalf of organizations not associated with the district. This might include surveys, contests, chain letters, or junk email. Advertising or offering to sell or buy goods for any personal purpose is prohibited. Subscriptions to daily jokes, horoscopes, recipes, or other similar items is also prohibited. Your signature block should contain the employee's name, position or title, the building you work in, the address, and the phone number. The signature block should not contain quotes regardless of source, even those including historical figures or biblical figures. Any email sent to non-BPS recipients will include the following stamp. Due to Florida's broad public records law, most written communications to or from government employees regarding public education are public records. Therefore, this email communication may be subject to public disclosure. So you may have heard about phishing emails. What do you do when you suspect a phishing email attempt? Do not open it. Make sure you take a screenshot if you can see the email in your preview pane, but do not forward the actual email. Now, delete the email without opening it. Utilize that picture that you took and send it to your school's tech. Remember to be suspect of everything. The BPS social media guidelines can be found in their full document at this link here. The key points of the guidelines are to make sure that any social media posts that you make add value, make sure you are responsible and transparent, protect confidential information, be respectful of others, remember that perceptions can be reality, keep your cool, be careful with personal information, and be a positive role model. Suggested guidelines regarding social media, do not text students, lock your social media down, do not leave it open to the public, be cautious about posting to social media accounts during the workday, do not post student work even if there is no identifying information. Do not be friends with students or parents on social media unless those students have graduated. An online certification coursework must be your own. Copyright. Books, music, pictures, clip art, and any other work by others is covered by copyright law. Fair use provides some exceptions, but it still has limitations. There is also a difference between what can be used in the classroom and what can be posted in places where the general public may have access. Fair use allows for printed material, articles and stories that are less than 2,500 words, and 10% or a total of 1,000 words of longer works. Single photographs in the classroom with limit for numbers from same photographer, a video shown for instructional purposes, a maximum of 30 seconds of music included in a multimedia presentation, and resources from the web may be downloaded for student and teacher presentations in the classroom. Fair use does not allow for copying and distributing an entire story or novel because you do not have enough copies. It does not allow you to put a photo you found online on your Google site unless it is listed as Creative Commons. It does not allow you to show a video or stream music to your class for entertainment or as a reward. And it does not allow you to use a popular song in its entirety as a background soundtrack for a student slide presentation. The acceptable use policy includes any use of the network for commercial purposes, advertising, or political lobbying is prohibited. If a staff member inadvertently accesses material that is prohibited, he or she should immediately disclose the inadvertent access to the building principal. This will protect the staff member against an allegation that he or she intentionally violated this provision. All communications and information accessible via the internet should be assumed to be private property. All copyright issues regarding software, information, and attributions acknowledgement of authorship must be respected.
FERPA is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. FERPA is a federal law that requires confidentiality by telling what information it may share and when and with whom they may share such information. It also gives the parents the right to consent to disclosure of their child's personally identifiable information. Directory information is not considered harmful to students if publicly released. This includes name, age, address, grade level. Non-directory are more sensitive than directory information. These include social security, student ID numbers, grades, disciplinary history, attendance records, and student schedules. Some FERPA do's and don'ts. Do ask, am I sharing student info? Can someone ID my student from this information? And do I have parental consent? Make sure to shred personal identifiable documents. Use technology that is approved by the district or school and check for parental consent before including non-directory information in a student recommendation. Don't use educational technology programs that are not approved and that share personal information. Don't send student grades and other non-directory info via email. Use the phone. Don't publicly post students' personal info online without parental consent, and don't use social networks to connect students with classroom pages and events. You are our eyes and ears for security incidents. Remain alert and vigilant. If there is an incident, notify your administrator and technology associate. Report the incident to the help desk at extension 11735. Do not power off the computer if there is suspected vulnerability or cyber threat. Remove the network cable and preserve evidence. If you have questions, you can contact your tech associate or integrator.